Hey guys, um, for today's video, I wanted to uh, share probably like one of the most important lessons that I've learned um, just sort of in my card game journey. And, um, and that relates to like taking losses from um, a player worse than yourself. And um, specifically, you know, I'm talking about in the games that involve like some element of luck. So like not chess, like obviously if, if you lose in chess, like you can't get mad. They just outplayed you. But um, in card games, that's often not the case. And of course, you know, to an extent, you know, which player is better than another will always be like somewhat subjective. But, um, you know, whether you're playing cards like a, you know, a local game store or, uh, you know, a, a casino or something like that, there'll usually be players where you can sort of tell like right away, oh, that person's like way worse than me. And, um, you know, I hate to break it to you, but uh, those players are are going to beat you sometime like it's just a fact um you know i i remember in in Oh in in 2008 i was um playing you know this sort of dark arm dragon um return deck for example which was like the consensus like best deck at the time it was extremely broken and um in one particular match, I actually had someone who opened a structure deck and was able to beat me in a game. So, like, it does happen. Like, just just mathematically speaking, um, anything can happen. And, um, yeah, I want you to consider, even, even for those who, like, don't, like, go to the casino at all or gamble or do anything sort of that, I want you to sort of, just, just for a brief moment, try to put yourself in the mentality of... Um, that you own a casino, right? Um, so, you, you know, if someone comes to your casino and, uh, you know, plays plays some game that involves an element of luck, but of course is going to, you know, inherently favor the house, um, you know, whether it's like slots or blackjack or craps or whatever, you know, there will be some people that come into your casino and win lots of money. Like, I'm talking tens of thousands of dollars, right? It just happens. Because, you know, if you got hundreds of people coming into your casino every day, one of them is going to get lucky. And, you know, what does a good casino do when that happens, right? Do they do they get mad? You know, do they try to say, oh, you won this bunch of money, you know, I'm not going to let you leave with it? Or do they ban it? They say, no, they say, you know, thank you for coming. Let me know if there's any way we can be of service. Um, you know, they might even invite them back, right? You know, in Vegas, you know, I know people who basically get free hotel offers and that sort of thing because, you know, they recognize that um, even though that person came into the casino and took a bunch of money from them, they are a good customer, right? They are just as good of a customer as as anyone else. And, you know, what I've also kind of realized is that you know, while I consider myself to be, like, pretty good at card games, I am not, like, some kind of savant, right? I am not some, you know, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! Rain Man type or whatever, or Magic Rain Man or Poker Rain Man, right? I, you know, I, I know some basic strategy and typically I'm able to win a lot more than I lose. And the reason that I'm able to do that is, is, um, you know, simply because of the fact that there are people who are willing to play with me that are worse than I am. And that goes for, um, you know, poker specifically. I am not, you know, Phil Ivey or Daniel Negrano or one of those types, right? You know, when there's not, of course, some big pandemic going on, you know, I go to the casino and give or take, I, I'm up about $1,000 for the month on average, right? You know, one month it might be 500 maybe another month it's 2000 but give or take, I'm up about 1000 each month. And again, it's, it's not because I'm some sort of poker genius, it's because there are people who are willing to come there and essentially give me their money. And you have to think about, well, why is it that they're, that they're willing to do that, right? Why is it that whether it's in Yu-Gi-Oh or Magic the Gathering or poker, 
um, where I can, you know, sit down with the same people day after day, week after week, even though they are much worse than I am, and they are, you know, willing to sit down with me and play me in a game where I know the strategy better than they do, um, and, you know, for money at stake, right? Obviously, in poker, you know, there's going to be hundreds of dollars being exchanged on the table at any given point. But even in, you know, some sort of local game store environment or whatever, usually, you know, you're paying 10 bucks to enter, you know, some sort of prizes at the end, whatever. So these people are willing to, you know, pay money to play against someone who is better than they are. And why is it? Why is it that they're willing to do that, right? Um, or even, you know, in the casino, right, where, you know, they come there to play slots, they come there to play craps, and... Um, they probably know on some level, right, that the game is is rigged against them, right? No one thinks that, you know, the slot machine is free money, right? You know, they all sort of know that on average it favors the house. And why is it then that, you know, you have people who will willingly give away their money um, in some sort of game, whether it's a game of luck or a game of skill, that uh, that they are just not favored to win it. Why is it that they're willing to do that? And um, well, there's there's a few reasons. It's not a single reason. Um, of course, the biggest reason is is that they're having fun, right? They get some sort of enjoyment out of it, right? So, you know, if someone comes there to play slots, they know that playing slots is sort of you know not gonna make them money on average, but the enjoyment that they get out of doing that makes up for the fact that they're losing money, right? Um, and, and same thing with, you know, like Yu-Gi-Oh or Magic or, you know, whatever other game, right? Um, you know, someone might come to their, you know, f &M, you know, every Friday, you know, maybe with not like the greatest deck, you know, they might go, you know, 3-2 or 2-3 or, you know, 1-2 drop or whatever, and they come back the next week and do it all over because, um, they're having fun in spite of, you know, mostly losing to players, better than they are right you know occasionally you know they might play against you know the the greatest player in in the game and and beat them in a match just you know um just just by luck right and so part of the reason that they can have fun while still losing most of the time is the fact that they won't lose all of the time right so you know, there's a reason that we see that um, games like chess, for example, um, have kind of been, like, going out of style, right? I mean, if, uh, if you know, some sort of newer player, you know, comes, comes to, you know, play chess, everyone else is better than them, and they just get bopped over and over and over again. They lose 20, 30, 50, 100 matches of chess in a row. You know, pretty pretty soon, one of two things are going to happen, right? They're either going to get good or they're going to stop playing. Those are about, like, the only options, right? Whereas um, in these sort of games that are a mixture of luck and skill, like card games, people can see, well, I'm not good, but, you know, I'm winning 30% of my matches, so I'm going to keep going. Or if it's poker, they might say, well, most of the time when I come to the poker table, I lose money, but sometimes I win big, and that sort of makes it worth it. So at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say is that if you're playing one of these games that is a mixture of, of luck and skill and you play someone much worse than you and they beat you, the fact that they were able to beat you is what allows you to have that edge over the field, right? Because if something like uh, you know Magic the Gathering or Yu-Gi-Oh or what have you were just like chess, where the better player won 100% of the time, then it would become like chess, right? Where every player that was bad would just stop playing or get good and it would sort of become sort of this incredibly difficult game the way like competitive chess is now, right? You practically like have to be a robot to be any good at chess. Whereas, um, you know, in games like, uh, you know, that, that I say, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh, Poker, Magic, whatever, there's a lot of low-hanging fruit, right? There's a lot of people who are worse than you and they are not making any attempt to get good because they win some of the time. So just in the same way where, you know, if someone comes to a casino and wins tens of thousands of dollars, they say, thank you for coming. I hope you come back soon. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you because they recognize that person is a good paying customer. The same thing applies 
to to you even though you're obviously not running a casino in a game of you know in a game of cards right so you know if if you go to um whatever it is you know your your local fnm your you know ycs championship and you know a bad player um beats you you should be happy for them you should thank them you should say good game um i had fun playing against you and i hope you come back because that person is your customer the fact that that player who is much worse than you are will sometimes beat you statistically speaking some amount of the time the fact that they can beat you sometimes is what gives them the will to keep playing in the in in the case of games like poker and maybe to an extent also magic um which can be played professionally you know, the fact that that bad player can beat you is literally what allows you to make a living. Like, these people are supporting your livelihood. So, you know, just the same way that, like, a casino, like, wouldn't get angry at, um, you know, someone who comes and wins a bunch of money in slots, like, they would be happy for them, you should be exactly the same way. Because you know that in the long run, it favors you, and what you need to do in order for it to keep favoring you is to make sure that you know those players who are worse than you keep playing right because they might only win 40 percent of their matches or whatever but the fun that they're having makes up for it so you should you should help them have fun right um you know you should say you know great game you should you know talk to them in between rounds you know those those players like those players are your customers right so um so yeah just want to get that out there like i don't hear like enough people saying that i know like personally like kind of my origin story like in Yu-Gi-Oh was you know when i started winning at locals i was treated uh very badly actually by by a lot of you know people sort of the the elite people you know at my locals who were sort of used to the same people winning all the time. And any time um, someone bad, you know, like me, won, they, they, they felt threatened. They, you know, wanted to, and not even threatened really, it, it was sort of like an ego hit, right? It was like they wanted to remind them like, hey, even though you just beat me, you know, just, just so you know, I'm actually way better than you overall, right? They like wanted to sort of set the record straight, right? Like, hey, you beat me this time, but I'm going to beat you the next three. And, like, you don't have to do that, right? Like, you know, a lot of people, like, don't even keep track of their win rate, right? Like, you know, there there's people who, like, at the casino, you know, they come there, you know, every week to play slots or whatever, and, and obviously, like, in the long run, they're going to lose money. But if you don't remind them that in the long run they're going to lose money, they're going to sort of keep coming back to give you more of it, right? So, So that's, like you know kind of how it is right like if you were to to sort of walk up to the average um Yu-Gi-Oh player the average magic player and say uh you know hey on average how many matches do you think you win like what percentage right you'd probably hear like oh probably 70 percent probably 60 percent and if you walked around to every single player like in your local store they would all think that they're winning more than half the time when, like, clearly mathematically that just isn't possible, right? Like, everyone at your locals can't be winning 70% of the matches at locals. So, so the point is, is it's, it's not about, like, you know, it's, it's not about, like, reputation, right? Like, you don't have to remind everyone that, like, they're so much worse than you. Like, there's definitely a time where I do that, because that was, like, all I knew, right? Like, um... You know, like I said, when I sort of started getting good, that was just how people are. They just always want to remind you, hey, you beat me this time, but just so you know, you suck. But, like, in reality, that's actually going to hurt you in the long run because there are going to be people who, who will quit because of that, where you say, like, hey, you beat me, but just so you know, you suck. And then they go, well, fine, I guess I won't come back next week. And that that hurts you. Like, you should... You, <laughs> your goal should be to get as many bad players to show up at your locals as possible and it's the same thing like at the poker table right like when i go to the casino to play poker most of the time you know it's it's a table of nine people and 
all eight of the other players at the table are much worse than I am. And that's great. That is like awesome. So like, you know, if, if, if I get it in good, but like they suck out on the river or whatever, I just say, you know, nice hand. And then you just move on to the next one. Like that's, that's how you do it. And that is like, that is actually like a big part of poker culture and a big difference between like poker culture and like, in particular, like Yu-Gi-Oh culture. You know, like in poker, they have a saying like, don't tap the tank. In other words, like if someone's bad, don't like upset them or scare them off. You want them to stay there. Whereas in Yu-Gi-Oh, it's like the opposite where if someone's bad, you have to like remind them every five seconds that they're bad, which is, I mean, it's, it's self-destructive. You're, you're hurting your ability to make a living. So yeah, hopefully that, uh, got the point across sufficiently. I guess let me know what you think on on this philosophy, uh, in the comments if you want and, uh, take care. See you guys next time.